Guys, this is Brian Mouth with TorpMechanic.com. My wife and I are seriously considering purchasing some property in Southern California. There's a bug here. Southern California has some of the smallest lot sizes in the country uh, as an average. And naturally, my daughter wants to have a swimming pool in that lot, so I've been doing a little bit of research. Did you know that if you're gonna put in a swimming pool into a property, let's call a good average size swimming pool, swimming pool 500 square feet of land space. The typical swimming pool has approximately 600 square feet or more of patio space around it, which means a standard swimming, swimming pool in a regular backyard is going to take more than 1,000 square feet of grass out of the equation. One of the strongest arguments for getting rid of grass and traditional lawns is we don't have to irrigate them anymore. And that's a good thing, especially for places like Southern California, where these places don't have enough water to irrigate, or people don't think that they have enough water to irrigate and keep a green, healthy lawn. What's crazy here is most people don't understand the facts. A standard swimming pool loses approximately a quarter inch of water per day to evaporation. And that rate is pretty uh, average across the country. However, it will decrease in uh, colder environments that are more humid and cloudy, and it will increase in environments that are hotter and sunny. Where we're looking in Southern California, we're gonna be having a pretty hot environment that is also cloudless and dry. So chances are good that quarter inch per day are actually gonna be a little bit higher than that than they might be in other places of the country. Now let's convert that water loss due to evaporation into gallons. If you have a 500 square foot pool and you lose a quarter inch per day, then that means you're losing approximately one and three quarters of an inch of water per week due to evaporation. The more you use the pool, the more evaporation is gonna happen, the hotter, all that sort of stuff. It's gonna increase that evaporative loss rate. Now, of course, you could cover the pool and that's gonna slow things down, but most people don't do that. It's an added expense and it's an added hassle to owning a pool. Now, I don't own a pool here in my yard, but I certainly am researching it because it applies to me and my future life. Now, in a pool setting, we're not losing water from the patio, it's only the pool space itself. So let's call it 600 square feet of patio space around a 500 square foot pool. 1,100 square feet of space is losing approximately 625 gallons of water every single week due to evaporation. Okay, so how does that translate to the lawn scenario? If I have a thousand square feet of lawn, one of the most standard measurements of how much a, a lawn needs in water, ter in terms of water every single week, is one inch of water per week. Now, different grass types have different needs. And the same thing applies to evaporative loss from the soil itself. We're gonna be losing some water to evaporation, but if we're watering well, if we're doing following good watering practices, we're actually minimizing that quite a bit. A lawn, let's call it a Kentucky bluegrass lawn, might need one and a half inches of water per week. It wouldn't make any sense whatsoever to grow Kentucky bluegrass in certain areas of the country. Certainly not Southern California, where we're looking to buy some property. But other lawn types like Bermuda or Zoysia or Buffalo grass, these require a lot less water. If we've got a heavy shade environment like right here, even in a coastal temperate, hot, warm season zone, you probably could even get away with growing a fine fescue, which also requires less water, or possibly a turf type tall fescue, which also requires less water. These grass types, you can get away with only an inch or less per week. Now an inch, let's just call it an inch. If you're putting an inch of water, irrigation water onto a lawn that's a thousand square feet, you're also applying approximately 625 gallons of water to that lawn. So what I'm saying here is if you are purchasing a property or looking to remove grass to put a swimming pool in so that you don't have to irrigate, you're not actually saving anything. You actually have to top off that swimming pool every single week by an inch and a half inch and three quarters of water, maybe two inches of water, depending on your volume of evaporative loss. With a lawn, if we're not getting rain, we're also gonna be putting down an inch of water, except for we're gonna be putting it on the entire 1,000 square feet section. 
and that amount of water that goes down is the same amount of water that we have to top off swimming pools, approximately 625 gallons, one inch of water per week on every thousand square feet zone. Now, lots of areas of this country have far larger lawn spaces than 1,000 square feet, but this is a fairly common yard size for many urban environments, especially urban environments in hot weather zones. Now, I don't have a problem with swimming pools. I'm looking into putting a swimming pool in our eventual property down south, but I'm not going to be doing it nor would I ever advocate anyone doing it for the purpose of water conservation. It's not conserving any more water. And in fact, it's actually more detrimental to, uh, I don't know, to the environment than the lawn is itself. In this lawn, we are actually photosynthesizing the sun's rays, turning it into energy. We are capturing carbon, storing it in the ground. That's called carbon sequestration. We have biological life in our soil and our grass, and we are able to support pollinators and other wildlife in our uh, immediate neighborhood if we manage our lawn well, if we don't use pesticides, if we don't use chemicals, if we allow things to invade our lawn like clover or medic or any of the other ground cover plants that have lots of little flowers, a lawn space is actually going to retain moisture under the turf canopy of the lawn, reserving moisture in the soil for beneficial microbial activity and a thriving biological life. Whereas a concrete patio around a swimming pool and the swimming pool itself is not going to be harboring biological life as well because nobody wants to swim in a swimming pool that is teeming with biology. Now, I don't want this to come off as a bad thing against swimming pools. What I do want you to understand is a lawn space is better per square foot than a swimming pool is for the ecology around your house. It is very common to go ahead and take a look at an aerial satellite view of urban environments in warm season climate territories and see nothing but patio, concrete pavers, and swimming pools. And everyone in the area touts this as a better thing for the environment because they're not wasting water watering the grass. What I hope that I can achieve where I finally purchase property is to find a place where I can have a swimming pool for the benefit of the family, but I can also put a lot of green space around it because I feel like that green space is significantly more important than many people understand. I'm gonna go into this topic in significant depth over the coming months. Subscribers of this channel are gonna find videos all the time about how to tend to their lawn and how to do things in the lawn better, but we're also going to really dive into the topic of the biology of the lawn itself, its benefits and its drawbacks, because lawns are not perfect. Nothing in this life is perfect. We have to understand how they all work and how things relate to each other. On this channel, I'm an enormous advocate for not wasting water, using water most efficiently, not growing poor grass types for your location, growing the best grass types, growing the most drought tolerant grass types because turf grass is important for family life around the house. I don't advocate for growing turf grass out in the middle of the field where nobody uses it around my house where families use it, that's when it becomes important and useful. This is all about the benefits of turf grass. And I'm gonna start off with carbon sequestration. And this might be a topic that might be over the heads of some people. Uh, it certainly is a topic that environmentalists care quite a bit about, but not necessarily everybody. If you love your lawn, I hope you'll give it a watch because at the very minimum, it's gonna give you a base of information to justify the care that you put into your lawn. How beneficial are lawns? You might be surprised. 